set against the icy shores of the Baltic Sea is a place that has perfected the art of transforming simple ideas into global successes. This is a place that thinks beyond its own borders, not just because ambitions run high, but because the market demands it and success depends on it. Welcome to Sweden. The land of the midnight sun, do-it-yourself furniture, and more billion-dollar VC-backed companies per capita than anywhere else in the world. Here, we'll explore the powerful winds of innovation that have converged with local customs, values, and ways of living to create something unique. Together, we'll see firsthand how technology and tradition combine to form cloud cultures. Collaborating with people around the world with many different mindsets is one of the biggest challenges a company will face as they scale. It will require tapping into those different perspectives to create a better outcome. This is what draws me to Sweden, a market that has had immense global impact. Their holistic approach to innovation has created an environment that fosters collaboration when scaling and enables it to thrive. As we dive into things here in Sweden, I brought in my colleague, Asbjorn Ising. He'll help me make some connections and learn more about this country's cloud culture. To kick things off, Asbjorn is on his way to meet with a Stockholm-based startup that's helping retail businesses flourish and meet the demands of an ever-evolving industry. So Daniel, where did this thing start? Storky is a tech company which is helping the retail industry by removing friction, both for consumers but also for the retailer themselves. Back in 2018, we tried to build a technical platform to really help the retailer stay more profitable, to stay in business. More than half of our grocery stores here locally in Sweden have closed mm -hmm. since the early 90s. Mm -hmm. That has an immense impact on the quality of life. So we built a grocery store in a module and we put it out in the rural area of Sweden. And from there on, we grew and we built a whole retail chain of stores. So 32 stores across Sweden in rural areas providing this service to those communities. We've talked about the benefits of the customer experience, but what's the benefit for the retailer? A florist shop is a great example. The florist is the hero of the store. They are the person that the customer walks in to have an experience with. But if I come home late for work, I want to pick up some flowers on my way home. They are usually closed because the florists work what we call bakery hours. So why not then leverage technology by hanging on this sign on the front door saying gone fishing, but the store is still open for you. Could you elaborate? So, so one of the florist shops that we helped, she only became kind of teary eye as we went live. And she said, tomorrow is gonna be the first weekend since I became a mother seven, eight years ago, that I'm gonna spend with my family. She can access the POS system on her phone and see what she's selling. So it's just a beautiful story. I love it. You created these retail capabilities and improving the technology in Sweden. Where are you going now? Retail is obviously a huge industry and all these obstacles of running a physical stores is very similar. It doesn't matter if you're in Japan or in, in the US or in Sweden. But now looking to the future, it's a Swedish uh, thing now. They're coming to us right. to, to look for help when it comes to retail technology. You always considered your solution to be something that you grow outside of this uh, native market, right? I would say that the Swedes, when they start a company, they, from day one, are building it to grow outside of Sweden. So it's already prepared to go internationally. And I think that's a great foundation to have. Stockholm is really a tech hub. It's easy access to a lot of talents, and I think it's in our DNA of Swedish people to, to build stuff in general. I am so excited about seeing what you've done with Storky in five or ten years' time. Thank for that you wanted to come today. Fantastic to be here. By identifying common obstacles and leveraging cutting-edge technology, companies like Storkey are finding novel ways to maximize their impact. 
But with new innovations come new concerns, and few understand this better than the banking sector. And that's exactly why Aspion is connecting with some of Sweden's top banks, like Handelsbanken, an organization built on a strong emotional bond with their customers. So your business runs on trust. I mean, banking is, is a trust business. And that's why it's uh, the, all the choices we are doing, we are making um, in, in delivering services, in, in uh, looking for partners, we have to make sure that uh, this trust part is, is maintained and even, even increased. You have this great history. What made you want to take that step into accelerating your digitalization journey? We also came to the conclusion that using technology and using cloud services is something that uh, improves our capability for innovation, mm -hmm. uh, employee experience, sure. um, creating better interactions with our customers. We have to make sure that we're using the technology that is available and that mm -hmm. can help us to do this in the best way. And, and that is a, a, an important nuance, I think, to this adoption of and, and willingness to adopt new technologies as well. And I think it's not only a nuance, I think it's an elementary part why yeah. Sweden is so leading in adoption of new technologies, of new services. I mean, the, the way that we're using cash is, is totally unbelievable compared to other countries. The mm. way that new technologies are embraced, the, the trust that people also have to new technology, I think is very, very different to other countries. The trust built over generations of service empowers Handelsbanken to innovate on behalf of their customers. And this same customer-first approach led Swedbank to a new way to protect their clientele from threats, generative AI. Can you talk a little bit about what global events kind of impact you as a business? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I don't think it's any secret. A couple of years back, we were kind of hit hard by, by some of these criminal activities. It led us to start thinking around what is the best way to future-proof ourselves in this domain. How do we go forward now to, to kind of sort of regain the trust of our customers, mm -hmm. to honor the history of which our bank was founded on? How did you get to the realization that you needed to significantly automate? When we started with the fact that we could just look at the backlog and right. just see, okay, this right. is a massive amount of work. But it's not just a matter of efficiency, it's a matter of actually being able to detect those things in a much more proactive way than we've done before. And then we had a brilliant team of smart people and say, guys, let's try to look at all of this ML AI stuff that we're doing already in the retail space. So we had already been working in the AI domain for, for several years, but essentially we could look at the code base and say that we can by small tweaks, this and that, be able to reuse those assets mm -hmm. instead of detecting the best customer to pick up a credit card pick up the customer that is doing something that is a little bit fishy. How do you feel that the regulatory bodies are picking up on the work that you're doing? Working with AI Sweden and other bodies, governmental bodies, to try to see how can we spread this knowledge? Right. You know, how can we utilize our knowledge? Because in the fight against financial crime, it's not about me and you, it's not about Swedbank only, it's a societal problem. We look at it and say, okay, how can we contribute to, to this, not in a sweat bank confined matters, mm -hmm. but how can this be something that we can actually contribute in a societal matter? I think in the fight for the good, we are really breaking new ground to find new ways to collaborate with partners, with other financial institutions. I mean, uh, those, those are big topics, yeah. but I, I think that's definitely a conversation that we will be needing to have mm -hmm. in the years to come. Fighting fraud is a huge undertaking, and with the responsible use of AI, we can begin to see progress. But there's an even bigger battle still to be fought, an existential one, climate change. Here in Sweden, sustainability isn't performative or some trendy buzzword, it's fundamental. Not just for Swedish companies, but their partners too. And one of ours is an energy company making waves with its commitment to a fossil-free future. Hi, Annika. It's fantastic to get the chance to talk with you. Tell me a little bit about fossil freedom at Vattenfall and what that means uh, for you and for the company. Well, it is, in a way, you could say, our, our purpose. So everything we do, we want to help the entire society to be fossil-free. And that means that every single piece, regardless of whether it's transport or the way that you extract a material, the way that you produce that material, transport it to site, all of that should be fossil-free and be done in a responsible way. So for the entire supply chain, the entire ecosystem, is free of fossil fuels. Yes, we do our 
our share. Yes. But then in collaborations with actors in the supply chain, in collaboration with our customers, in collaboration with local communities, we help all these different actors to secure that we can have a fossil-free society. You know, you've mentioned to me as well that focus on sustainability is not just an environmental thing, but it's also a human rights thing, and I'd love to hear you more talk about that. I think for everyone in, in Sweden, sustainability is really about striking the balance between the environmental, social and economic aspect. If we want to change and tackle the climate, we need to safeguard the environmental aspects like resource efficiency, but also at the same time secure that it's done in a fair way. We need to build tons of new wind production. We need to have new grids connecting the industries that need to use fossil-free fuel sources instead of the fossil fuels. And when doing that, it's going to impact people. So we have a lot of interaction with local communities and so forth. So it's really everything fits, fits together. together. Obviously, the last few years have had some challenging times for a lot of us. How have you been able to stay focused on sustainability and be able to continue to work in similar ways during this uncertain time? During the pandemic, we were so focused on delivering what we could and safeguarded, so we put in new protection activities at the different plants. Yes. We introduced, thanks to teams, virtual fikas. Fika is this special thing in Sweden where you always like to sit down, have a cup of coffee, uh, do the chat thing, and that, that has worked a lot. And so are we doing, is this a fika right now, or is this uh, This not, is not a fika. Not, 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 not a fika, okay. no. Okay. no. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. And fika usually then also comes with some bun or cookies oh, or well, something nice. Oh, now I'm definitely doing this. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> So you mentioned a lot about the fact that the entire ecosystem, the entire supply chain is involved in sustainability. How does that impact actually the workforce across both Vettenfall, but also sort of the broader workforce across that ecosystem? Well, it means that we need to reskill people and we've done that very carefully. But then also even putting your requirements on your supplier and asking them to prove how they are also cascading their requirements further down in the supply chain. And this is where the Microsoft's targets ourselves come into play here as part of your ecosystem and also supplying services to our end customers, doing it in the cloud using sustainable and clean energy. Exactly. Which is exactly why yeah. I come here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's why we, of course, have been putting requirements on you, wanting transparency on carbon footprint, wanting you to show how you are acting along your value chain with securing living wages, etc. So all of that is part of our collaboration and, and the way that we need to work. Love that. And hopefully we're living up to your expectations. Yes, so okay. far so looks far, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to continue to talk and make sure that we Definitely. continue to live up to your expectations. Fantastic. That's what we do. It's one plus one becomes three. It's together that we can tackle all the challenges. It's all about collaboration. It is. As I reflect on how the idea of FICA is woven into Sweden's culture of innovation, it becomes clear that when shared beliefs underpin collaboration, the impact can be extraordinary. I want to dig into this thought a little bit more, and who better to explore this with than Aspion? It's also a perfect opportunity to reconnect and catch up on all that we've learned. Aspion, it's been really an honor to be here in Sweden. It's been fantastic. Tell me about some of the customer conversations you've had. Well, I think uh, when I look at it, it's so amazing that we are a, a country that is so small, but still have these global ambitions. Mm -hmm. And and those global ambitions are really transparent and, and come out in these stories that we with these customers that I've met. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things when I talked with Annika was a real focus on the human element, the focus on humans working together to solve big problems and collaboration. She mentioned this concept called FICA, which I got really caught up on the seven different types of cookies, uh, but it really is focused on the human power of collaboration. Indeed, and, and that collaboration, collaborative spirit is also what drives us both innovationally as well as being willing and able to share with the world in terms of, of things that we can contribute with. Sustainability being one of those absolutely, absolutely key factors. From the bustling streets of Stockholm to the windswept shores of the northern coast, the cloud culture here has shown me the untapped value that comes from embracing a broader perspective. It's a great reminder that while focusing on what's right in front of you may solve immediate problems, true success on a global scale is achieved through connection and collaboration. Together, we have the power to achieve greater things.
I leave Sweden with a new outlook and a deeper understanding of what makes this country so special. I can't wait to discover what's next. I think that that will always be part of British culture, that attempt to try and solve the unsolvable. It's not about technology alone. It's really how to people build agility and the quality into it. See you in the UK.